Welcome back to the show, Respectfully Inspired with Aussie Films. Today, I'm here with William Doan. What's up, William Doan is a YouTuber. He's a college student. He's a world traveler. He's a concert photographer. He's a man of many traits. <laughs> a Swiss army knife of sorts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like to start off every episode with my why behind the show, which is that I want to inspire you to invest in soul wealth. So most people measure success by wealth metrics, money, possessions, achievements, and or status. And the goal of the podcast is to change the way you measure success to relationships and memories, soul wealth metrics. Go ahead and introduce yourself the way you would like to huh. introduce. Okay, yeah. Uh, so my name is William. Um, yeah, everything Ozzy said is pretty much like on topic. Yeah. Uh, and I'm a man of many titles. I'm a YouTuber, creator, filmmaker, college student, um, concert photographer, photographer, videographer, student photographer. I don't know. I've just been trying a lot of different things and trying to see like what sticks. So yeah. yeah, that's why I have all these titles. But hopefully one day I can just say like I'm this guy and you know me by this if thing. If you could be any one title, what would it be? Ah, uh, then the one title would honestly just be YouTuber. Like you want to be a YouTuber? Yeah. Above all else. Above all else, just like a YouTuber. Yeah. What genre? Um, probably like vlogging, like cinematic vlogging. Mm. I'm really inspired by like Elliot Choi and like Kelly Wakasa and like Jed Cow. Mostly by Jed Cow because I really like the way he does like, um, like he vlogs and then he like inserts all these like nice cinematics throughout that kind of just keep you engaged. Interesting. And yeah, I just really like that. That's like the reason why I started like vlogging the way like in his style, just because I really like that style and so I wanted to try it out. I um, definitely could yeah. see the Elliot Joy inspiration. <laughs> yeah, Jed yeah. Cow and Elliot are in a very similar worlds, but it's interesting that you lean even more towards Jed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the thing I find particularly interesting about jed is that he he doesn't like consider himself solely a youtuber mm-hmm. whereas i feel like elliot definitely does yeah he he said like i i think he made a video recently that was like i'm going back to coding he's like i mm-hmm. want to code like mm-hmm. i enjoy coding as much as i enjoy being a youtuber which i thought was interesting right right yeah no um yeah he jed is like i think YouTube is like his passion. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, like filmmaking, like he he enjoys that. Um, but you know, like he he graduated with like a computer science degree, I I think. Yeah. I hope I'm getting that. Yeah, yeah. And so like he he, you know, got a full time job. And so it's like weird. I definitely I saw an article and he shared the article. It was talking about how like like you try um you know, nowadays when people become YouTubers, right? Like that becomes like solely their like their main yeah. job, their, solely like their source of income. But what Jed is doing is he kinda like yeah, he gets income from YouTube, but he started like not having that be his main thing, you know. Like he he has yeah. he has other things he works on. He has these projects that he works, like you know coding and all these like freelancing gigs that he does. At least I'm 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 pretty sure I'm getting all my my facts right. I think. Um, and the article is talking about how like it's kind of like normalizing not turning the YouTube into a job anymore. And yeah. To, to actually keep that as like your passion and something that you enjoy doing because something that Jet ran into was he got like burnt out and he um because it started feeling like a job it started feeling like something like he had to do instead of something that he enjoyed doing that's interesting like as i switched from uh vlogs to podcasting mm-hmm. i didn't like have this rep i mean i think what many youtubers come to and what many people come to in any creative field is that like you love something and then mm-hmm. once something you love becomes your job you don't love it as much. Right. You right. have deadlines, you have brands, you have, once you get to a certain level, you have employees. Mm. And so it's almost like, to me, I would rather be forced to film podcasts than be forced to have a vlog on a deadline. Mm. It's, it's like, I yeah. actually like them. I actually would say I love them pretty equally. Mm-hmm. But I would much rather have podcasting be my job than I would have YouTube being my job. Right. And I think that's actually fairly common because you see a lot of OG YouTubers who right now are super active with their podcasts, but they're not really mm-hmm. active with their YouTube channels. You know, mm-hmm. like Logan Paul was, is doing that. David Dobrik did that for a while. Um, so that is an interesting trend just to note. I don't know. Yeah. I do want to ask you about something completely different. Okay. Okay. For sure. Oh. I found out yeah. that you were a Boy Scout growing up. Whoa! How'd you get that fact? <laughs> oh, yeah. How do you get Boy Scout? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were a Boy Scout growing up. Oh, 
Uh, that's crazy. How'd you find that out? <laughs> I do my research. Oh, that's crazy. But okay. When I think of Boy Scout, I think of some little kid walking a grandpa across the street <laughs> and yeah. then getting like a badge for it. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't know anything about it. I think of that and then I think of the movie Up. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That's about all I know about being uh-huh. a Boy Scout. I know that with Eagle Scout or Cub Scout that it takes like hundreds, thousands of hours. So, mm-hmm. But I, I don't know anything and I'm sure a lot of the audience doesn't know anything. Mm-hmm. So could you just lay down the world of boy scouting yeah yeah so um i know like you know boy scouting has like recently gone to like a lot of controversy and i i don't know much about it you know i've i've since left uh boy scouting but at the during the time that i was um like honestly I had i have to thank that experience just because like that experience was what really got me out in the outdoors you know i did a lot of camping i did a lot of really fun trips like zion's national park and all these amazing trips with like you know, a group of, you know, guys that, you know, I just kind of grew up with and, like, got super close with. And, like, those trips, those experiences, like, really made us, like, close. And, you know, also, like, our, our like, you know, Boy Scout leaders were, like, you know, some of, like, the best leaders I've ever met. Like, they were, like, super kind and they were super um, caring in terms of how they wanted to nurture our growth yeah. to, like, you know, like, you know, you know, people, you know, people that can be of, you know, I guess, service to society and whatever, whatever way that may be. But in terms of being a Boy Scout, um... Like what happened? What um? What does that even look like? Yeah, so it looks like um a lot of like Boy Scout activities. It's a lot of outdoors. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of camping. Like we would have a camping trip once every month, and I always looked forward to that. I was like, yeah. you know, we scheduled them like mostly at the end of the month, um, and like I always looked forward. I was like, oh, yeah. we're camping at the month. Like we're gonna go to Joshua Tree. Oh, we're gonna go to you know, yeah. and Anzo Borrego and all that. Um. And so it's a lot of camping, it's a lot of outdoors. And in between those, like, you know, you have these days where you work on these things called merit badges. That's the sash that um that uh Russell has, you know, with all the badges. Yeah. So each badge uh represents like a certain topic, you know, like there's a computer science merit badge, there's yeah. a, a first aid merit badge, you know, all these archery merit badge. You know, so I ha- I had a collection of them, you know, I had yeah. archery, I had uh, some computer science, I had um first aid, um, I had a uh, boating. Uh, I had canoeing, kayaking. Um, I'm probably getting these names wrong, but you know, an assortment of those yeah. badges. And then, um, but how do you get a badge? You get a badge by you uh, going to a merit badge day, like an event, where they they teach the workshop. You know, and, and there's like a packet, like there's requirements to getting the badge. So they give you the packet. You know, you kind of work through the packet, and you're you know working with like you know a mentor of that merit badge. Yeah. And then like you know once you complete it, then like they can sign it off and say like you completed you. You can now earn this merit badge. Oh. Like you, you, you've uh, you've touched upon this world. Interesting. Of that, you know. I think one of my favorite one was a uh, game design. There was a game design merit badge. That really? was really cool. Yeah. Um. But so, uh, there's that. There's merit badges. You know, those are fun little topics. You know. And then there's the ranks. You know, um, your uh, like uh, Eagle Scout, right? That's the top one. I never made it to Eagle. I got to Life, which is the one under Eagle. Um. There's definitely uh. There's required merit badges that I never got, <laughs> and then like service hours that I needed to complete that I didn't. Yeah. So I didn't get to Eagle, but the time that I had during like was very. Was very... Is there any truth in the walking the grandparents across the street badge? Oh, is there any truth? Um, I, not in my experience. <laughs> uh, we definitely have like you know like we do community service. That's right. another thing too. Yeah, it's we do community service. Um, but <laughs> walking a grandparent across the street is very like very specific. Um, our community service, like, you know, like at least here in like Oceanside was like, you know, beach cleanups, um, maybe, uh, renovating like a, yeah. a flagpole for an, uh, a senior center. Yeah. Um, and then, or building, um, uh, a new like ball pit for like a private school. And, uh, it was really cool. Wait, did you, uh, was it your choosing to be a Boy Scout or was it something your parents just put you in? Um, it was something that my parents put me in. It uh, definitely wasn't, like, my choice. Like, oh, I want to be a Boy Scout. Yeah. And at first, I was very adverse to it. You know, yeah. I also was like, really? I'm going to be a Boy Scout? <laughs> You're going to make me become a Boy Scout? <laughs> um, but it 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 stopped feeling like me becoming a Boy Scout. And it, it started feeling more like I became part of a group of yeah. people that just wanted to do cool things. So do you think now, looking like where you're at now, it's funny because as a Boy Scout, you probably went to some sort of camp. You yeah. You went camping, and now you're... Went to creator camp for creators. Yeah. Uh-huh. Do you think that Boy Scouting helped you in any area such as discipline, hard work, building community? 
that you can see in your life fruitful now? Yeah. So, um, definitely community building yeah. uh, is probably like a, a, a skill or even an aspect, right. Um, of boy scouting. Like, again, like that was like, it was like, I'm not saying it was my first group of friends, but it was like, uh, it was like, you know, this community of people that wanted to like, just do cool things, you know, yeah. experience cool things. Um, and so in that sense, right, like doing cool things and experiencing cool things is what kind of transition is like, mm-hmm. it was like the common denominator for creative camp. Right. Yeah. Um, but you know, creative camp, you know, we're, you know, we're making films where, you know, we're artists, we're entrepreneurs, we're like, you know, get like kind of in the adult world. Whereas Boy Scout, we're just being boys, you know, we want to go like, you know, go climb a rock you yeah. know, and stuff like that. But um, I still think it's so valuable because so much of like high school friendships mm-hmm. are built on, um, are built on gossip or they're built on like talking bad or like they're they're just built on silly things whereas um and i think that's why sports are really valuable growing mm-hmm. up because you have friendships built on like mm-hmm. camaraderie and winning and um that's whatever but uh i think getting that skill young because i that's one of the things that changed my life so much was like creating friends from shared interests like mm-hmm. the creator community and mm-hmm. creator camp changed my life and so to have that lesson as a young, like through um, through Boy Scouts, I feel like is is super valuable. Yeah, yeah, I definitely yeah. Uh, the friends that I made weren't built on like the gossip, like you yeah. say. You know, it wasn't built on like um, or just high school drama. Or, you, know? you know, yeah, high school drama. All you know, you know, yeah. this and that. It was built on a struggle. Yeah, you know, it was built on the fact that. Oh, we're all trying to like become an Eagle Scout, right? That was the ultimate goal was to become an Eagle Scout. So we were trying to support each other. We were struggling with each other. And then we were cheering on for each other. Yeah. You know, someone made it, you know. Um, so that's what I really enjoyed. Like those were like some some of the most genuine friendships I had. And then and I knew they were genuine because we didn't just hang out because we would have a meeting for Boy Scout, yeah. right? No, like we hung out outside of it. Yeah. Like, as friends, like actual friends, like we would just go out and you know go about in the town we would go to mcdonald's we just yeah. have these late night talks and then it made it that much more impactful when we saw each other at those meetings when we saw each other at those events when we saw each other at the camping trip and then they made it that much more exciting when like the camping trips came at the end of the month because then we're like yes we did go camping with each other yeah no, that, that sounds epic i did something similar called indian guides i don't know if you were indian in. guides it's like you would go camping once a month uh-huh. but I like never. My dad never wanted to actually do. Signed up for it, and uh-huh. like we were supposed to go like ten to twelve times a year, and we pull up to like w- once a year. Um, I heard. Is it true that you speak a little bit of Vietnamese? Yes, yes, I do. I speak a little bit. Fluent or um, not super fluent enough to communicate. Um, I, I I I like to explain like this. I know enough to like order. I know enough to get around a little bit, but I don't know. I don't know enough to gossip. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like I don't know enough to like understand if like the aunties or uncles are like, you know talking bad or whatever, you know. Uh, but I know a little bit and you know, enough to communicate with my mom. But also my mom kind of has a different like Vietnamese language in the sense that she knows what it is what I'm trying to say. And even though like my Viet is very broken, but she knows what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So she has like an entirely different like dictionary or like. Yeah. Book for when she's speaking to me yeah. in Vietnamese, and when she actually speaks Vietnamese with like her family. Wait, so have you been to Vietnam? I have been to Vietnam. Yeah. Okay, that's that's crazy. So, uh, I want to get into how much you've traveled because you, yeah. you've seen like almost all. Uh, <laughs> or, uh, that's an exaggeration, but still, you did a a study abroad in in Singapore. Or was Seoul? Seoul. Yeah. You did a study yeah. abroad in Seoul. Mm-hmm. You did an internship in Singapore. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And you um, visited Bali. You're from Vietnam. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to leave you with all of that. So let, let's pick out a question here. Okay. What do you, how did studying abroad in Seoul, South Korea and just living there, like how did that impact you and affect you? Oh man, it was one of the most like blissful and peaceful times yeah. of my life. I, you, I don't know, when you get to see the world yeah. and you get to experience different cultures, different food, you really get, um, you get a sense of appreciation. Yeah. You know, I really loved my time in Seoul. I, lo- I loved it so much. I like miss it, you know? Yeah. And it's sad because when I think about it, when I, when I, re- when I reflect back on it, it feels like a fever dream, you know? Yeah. Just cause it was such, 
it was such a small part of my life, you know, like it's been almost like, you know, it's been like a year and a half now. It was only like six yeah. weeks of my life, you know, a little chunk here. Yeah. But during that time, during that six weeks, like in the moment, that was my life, you know. Uh, it was like I was going to an entirely different school. Uh, I made entirely different friends. And then I had an entirely different environment. And, you know, I I did that because, one, I couldn't get an internship here. Uh, but uh, two, um, I wanted to rediscover myself. Uh, you know what I mean? Like I wanted, I wanted the... I wanted the struggle. I was looking for the struggle. Like I went alone. I didn't know anybody. Right. My my mindset going into it was I'm gonna meet new friends. I'm gonna make you know meet new people, make new friends from this university. I didn't want to like go with people that I knew because I knew like that would just only hold me back because I'd be comfortable with just yeah. hanging out with them. Um, and so the idea was it's like who is William without like his friends? Who is William without his home? Who is William without all his toys and gadgets? You know what happens if you just put William in this entirely new place that he has no idea of doesn't know how to speak the language and how is he who is he going to become you know and that was kind of like the reason why i did that wait so naturally the follow-up so what, what happened who who was william what did he <laughs> what did he discover william, william became an absolute um and like william became a youtuber i i think i i'll put in much more videos in those six weeks than i have for like the past year like, I was making, like, videos, like, every two weeks, you know, I was very focused on the videos, and I was having so much fun making them, like, because, like, because it was a new environment, because everything was so unfamiliar, it made it that much more fun, like, to pull up my camera and just, like, record stuff, um, and so I feel like I actually became, like, you know, a YouTuber, a vlogger for those six weeks, yeah. but more so, um, I think I just became more, like, I don't know how to put it. Like, there's so many, there's like all these feelings, but I don't know how to boil it down. But I think I, what I want to say is, I just became more appreciative. Yeah. I just became more, um, I guess, sensitive, I guess, um, because being away from home and being in an entirely new place, like, you know, I, I don't want to like do anything wrong. I don't want to be, I don't want to like offend anybody, you know, because obviously the way I grew up is different from this entirely different culture that I'm living in right now. Yeah. Um, so I try to be more mindful. I, it, it became like, you know, I try to be more mindful. Um, but most important, like, like I just had a lot of fun. Like, yeah. you know. And, the, and yeah. I think the scarcity too, like when you talk about becoming a creator and making videos, is like, you know that, you know it's going to end. Mm -hmm. You know that in six weeks, you're not going to be in Seoul, South Korea. Yeah. That's not a place that you casually go. It's like, yeah. who knows if you, how many, you might only go, go back there one more time in your whole life. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So, uh, having that pressure, I also very much like respect the, like not knowing anyone because mm -hmm. it's so common for people to do study abroads or internships and then they t do a study abroad through like an English program mm -hmm. and then they only hang out with English speakers the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think it, cause it's funny cause I'm thinking about most study abroads, which take uh -huh. place like Spain or Europe. Uh-huh. Like, uh -huh. And that's like where I'm like, you should challenge yourself to learn the language, but somewhere like Seoul and South Korea is like, there's almost, there's no yeah. chance you're going to learn any, the language in six weeks or. Yeah, six. no. So no. to do it there is even more like impressive. Yeah. Yeah. I cannot, I cannot dog because obviously, like the program that I went through, like they were English speakers. Yeah, which you have to because you're yeah. doing school. And yeah, internship. yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was a school and internship. Um, but the people that I met there, it was cool because like they, they came from the other UCs. Yeah. So like, I met people from like UC Irvine, yeah, UCLA, and so like ultimately, like I also managed to like find another community and like build a, a network of people yeah. um, from that because it's like now I have friends that are you know go to this school or that school. Mm -hmm. um, but you know like they you know when you first start off like complete strangers yeah. did not know them. I like you know just met them on a flight. I'm like wait like are you also going to Yonsei right now? Like, is that is this, is this where you gonna be for the next six weeks? And then there's this really funny story. I really like this story and I, I tell it all the time. Um, one of my best friends on the trip, yeah. his name's Dylan. Um, and uh, he became like my best friend throughout the entirety of the six weeks. And this is how we met. Um, I flew in, right? And then the next couple of days was like spent kind of like, you know, doing chores and stuff, like trying to, you know, buy a laundry basket, you know, trying to buy, you know, yeah. soap detergent. And then so it was an off day. It was a Sunday or yeah. it was a weekend. And, you know, um, all the friends that I already met or people that I kind of knew about, I was like, you know, hey, what are you guys doing? Like, oh, like we're already busy. We had plans. I'm like, oh, okay. 
So my plan was I was going to go on like a solo journey. I was going to go on a solo adventure. I was going to go out to, you know, like this mall that I saw on TikTok, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I was going to do it by myself. And I go on the bus and I met uh, met all these people that were also part of the program. And they were familiar because I saw them from the airport. And then they were like, you know, oh, like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I recognize you guys. Like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, oh, you know, we're we're going to, you know, the the um the the palace you, you uh the palace and then I was, and then they're like what are you doing I'm like I'm about to go to this mall right now and yeah. they're like what if you just changed your plan yeah. and came with us <laughs> I'm like okay <laughs> so like on that bus like I was supposed to go to the mall and now I got roped in with all these people to go to this palace mm-hmm. and from that there was this dude named Dylan in the group and me and him just hit it off like it was just like we were just cracking jokes left and right mm-hmm. it was so funny and so from there like the next day he hit me like oh you want to go grab lunch you know, lunch turned into like, oh, let's go here, let's go there. And then like, yeah, that was oh, like, that was it. That's such a valuable lesson in there, which is a trait that I've been really focusing on in this last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and I've picked it up from like religious influences and stuff, but it's the trait of being interruptible. Mm-hmm. It basically says like a lot of people, especially people who attend UCSD, especially <laughs> yeah. people who are creators, uh-huh. we get so obsessed with like productivity. Mm-hmm in our plans and our to-do list Mm -hmm. that like we give them this like holy importance that we're like oh like this is what i've set out to do today like i'm supposed to film a podcast today i'm supposed to study today i'm Mm -hmm. supposed to do this and it's like i feel like the older and older we get the less and less we're willing to change our plans Mm -hmm. like as kids you have no plans you're just like whatever anyone invites you to do you're like i'm down yeah yeah i'm down and then as you get older you're like I would be down, but I have to study. And they're like, I would be down, but I have to study and make a video. Mm-hmm. You're like, I'll be down in three months. And yeah. it's like, in that trait of being interruptible and what the way I define it is that you still have everything you would do. You have your to-do list, you have your tasks, but you're willing to be interrupted. You're willing right. to say, hey, spending time with people is more important than my work. Mm-hmm. Going on an adventure is more important. Maybe this plan's, person's plans are better than mine. And mm-hmm. It's like how you just described you were willing to be interruptible and, and mm-hmm. go there instead of the mall and you made a best friend because of it. You had an adventure, you have a yeah. to tell. Yeah. It's like how true is that? So much of the time when you're willing to be interrupted. Right, right. Like it it leads to great friendships, great memories. And but but we put this unholy importance on like our mm-hmm. to-do list and what mm-hmm. we need to do. And so that's a trait that I've been hyper focused on this year. Just mm-hmm. Being interruptible. Yeah. You know, it's interesting that you brought that up and like saying like how like, oh i I'll be down in three months. Yeah. I had a friend recently um, because he's been, you know, he's been trying to hang out. He, he's one of my hometown friends. Um, but I've been, I've just been so busy, you know, with, with yeah. college. You know, I live in San Diego, you know, and Oceanside's still like 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, and, you know, on top of schoolwork, I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to foster this, you know, creative community and trying to like, you know, I guess, you know, keep the whole base camp vibe continuing. And he, he said this, he was like, like, cause like he would ask me, you know, we're in a group chat. He would ask me like, you know, let's hang out. And, you know, everyone is in the group chat is like, yeah, I'm down. Oh, yeah, I'm down. Oh, I'll, I'll see you guys in 30 minutes. I'll be there in 30 minutes. And then I'm always the one going like, I, I can't. Like, I have a coding assignment. Yeah. I have this. And then he says, he goes, dang, bro, like, I got, I, I always got to make, like, a two-month reservation, you know? Yeah. I got to make the a two-month reservation. I reserve you in two, you know, two months later to hang out. I'm like, oh, man, like, am I really, like, am, have I have I been very, like, I guess absent? Have yeah. I been very, like, so focused on the grind, so focused on the work that I, f- I forgot about, like, you know, just being able to spend time with people, yeah. you know. Um, so, yeah, it's really interesting a, that you brought that up. Yeah, that's yeah. a really big part of my brand, the soul of the brand, is because a lot of that, and that's been me, like, mm-hmm. it's been something I struggle with so much, but it's like, a lot of that comes from destination happiness. Like, you, right. you're like, all right, well, I have to do this assignment. Well, well, what, what you're saying when you say I have to do this assignment is that you think that, Something about that si- si- assignment is crucial to your future. Mm-hmm. Either it's going to affect your GPA, and you think that your GPA is going to affect how much you earn, and you think, and you're playing this like butterfly effect with where your future could go. Right. And you're like, and maybe it's not an assignment. Maybe it's a video. It's like, oh, if I don't get a video out this week, well, then I, then I'm not going to be a big YouTuber in my future. And you make these like, so like you make these uh, these predictions about mm-hmm. like what you need to do today so that you can be have a better life in your future and better emotions but then it's like you get to your deathbed and if you ask anyone how they want to be remembered on their deathbed they go they say something along with the relationships how i treated people how 
I loved others, how I listened and cared. And it's like all those people that you love in your life, you're constantly telling them you're too busy or that you, you can't make time. And it's like, but, and you think you have good intentions because you're like, oh, but I'm going to have a career and then I'm going to bless my friends or I'm going to like do this. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, but it's like if you, if you died unexpectedly, which hopefully you wouldn't. Right. You wouldn't want to have been like, oh, I, I would have hung out with you in two months or I would have died. Right. And so that's like the whole thing with soul wealth is like, how do we reverse engineer? It's not that, I mean, I'm a, I'm a podcaster and I'm every week, twice a week, like, <laughs> like I'm that same person, but it's like, how do you constantly check with yourself so that you're not, so that when it is your time, people don't go, oh my gosh, William, like I never got to spend any time with him or I never got to, Yeah. he was so hard to reach or he's yeah. so hard to like, you know, it's so important to like constantly ask yourself that uh -huh. yeah. question. So, so have you figured out the answer yet? Or are you still also trying to find I mean, that out? I think so. So it's like the best entrepreneurs, the best entrepreneurs create solutions to their own problems. Mm. So like, even if you look at creator camp, it's like, why did Chris, Simon, Max and Ryan make creator camp? Mm -hmm. It's because they are creators and they were lonely. Mm -hmm. They're creators and they struggled to find other creators. Right. So they created a place where creators could be less lonely and could find other creators. And that's why I think it's been so fruitful. So it's like, for me, I was a workaholic, addicted to work, thinking that there was a better future. I was thinking that when I get a million subscribers, I will be happy. When I get this much money, I'll be happy. And I realized you're just training yourself to put happiness in the future and anything that's in the future will not be where you're at. Um, and so I came with soul wealth. It's like changing the way you measure success to relationships and memories. Mm -hmm. if, if I can really look at myself and be like, I am successful based on my relationships and memories, how did I treat people today? How, what what memory am I creating? And that's why I would say like like this, like let's take this podcast for example. Right, right. I'm going to upload this, the okay. post button. Let's take the day I post this podcast. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's a podcast. It could be a YouTube vlog. It could be a, a music song. It could be a homework assignment. Everyone thinks about the post button and they're waiting till after they hit post to find out if they're successful. So they're like, Based on how many views my YouTube video gets, I'll decide if I'm successful. Mm -hmm. Based on how much, how many streams my song gets, I'll decide if I'm successful. Mm -hmm. Based on the grade I get on this assignment, I'll decide if I'm successful. Yeah. And the whole goal for me is that by the time I hit post, I should know if I'm successful. If if we created a relationship, mm -hmm. well, that's more important than me than any money I'll make. Mm -hmm. If this is a memory sitting on this mountain with a beautiful view, <laughs> this view is crazy. Then I already won. Yeah. And everything that comes after money. Views, that's all a bonus. Yeah. Right. Sure, I want the podcast to go viral. Sure, I want it to make me money. Mm -hmm. But it's like reframing your success that like you're not living so much for the future. And it's like, there's like, and it's hard because there's situations where like, you know that you're going to have to do the discipline thing. You're going to have to stay in and do the assignment. Right. But more and more and more, I'm trying to choose the people over the work because it's like, mm -hmm. I want to be remembered for how I how I treat people. So why am I living for work? Mm -hmm. It's like jobs don't love you. People love you. Mm -hmm. But we live for work and, and, and we don't live for people so, mm -hmm. so much of the time. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like, it's like just accepting that, uh, you know, sometimes there will be time where I choose people over work and, and that will affect my career. But is it, is it really affecting my success? It only affects your success if you define success in those metrics. Right, right. And that was like a rant, but, um, and I think the important part of this is like a lot of people like they hear me talk about this stuff and they and they they question it and they think that like uh, I have a really good grip and I hope I do have a really good grip. But mm -hmm. the thing is, it's not like a one time thing where it's like, all right, I'm measuring success for relationships and memories and I'm mm -hmm. good forever. It's mm -hmm. like every single month, every single day, you got to check yourself over and over and over again right. because it's like a problem that will keep repeating. It's like pride or ego. Like, it, it, like if you have an ego or pride, as your followers increase, you have to, like, check yourself, check yourself, check yourself. So it's like constant jagging yourself. But to me, the thing that has helped the most is those metrics of society. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, I don't know. That was a lot to lay on you. So if you have any thoughts, of course. No. Like that. That's very interesting. And I'm glad. I'm glad you brought that up. It's, um, I guess to build off of that or like to like kind of branch from that is like I have been like 
obviously, you know, for the past while now, like I've always focused on like the views and the yeah. likes, you know, and and I, and and it started to consume me. It started to be like I I stopped loving what I did. I I was like, oh my god, I just okay, all right, this didn't work out. I need to I need to post the next one so I I can see if it does better, you know. Yeah. Like to make myself feel better, I, I need to post more, right? And obviously, me wanting to post more means less time away from those that you know I care yeah. about. But this year, and since base camp. I've been trying to refocus and realign myself in a sense where I just want to actually and truly enjoy the process, yeah. enjoy the journey, right? So if it means that, you know, I'm editing a video and my friend comes in, hey, you want to go get food? And yeah. it's going to be me saying, yeah, let's go get food and not, oh, I got to edit this video. Yeah. And I mean, like, it, I, like I'm going to get to where I need to be when I need to be. You know, I'm gonna get to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up where I need to be. I, I, I'm trusting, you know, whatever, you know, greater power there is, or you know, the universe, or you know, yeah. I trust that I'm gonna eventually get to where I need to be. It's just, you know, like I guess the success or the views or whatever, like, it's not yet my time is what I keep saying. Not yet my time, but yeah. we see, you know. So I'm gonna trust that, you know, I can keep doing what I love doing, being able to balance between yeah. hanging out with my friends, you know, um, doing schoolwork, creating videos. You know, allowing myself to have breaks and not have to worry about, oh, I got to post the next time. Otherwise, yeah. you know, I can't build a community. I can't keep people engaged. And just, just I guess, learning to get, I, I, I guess to sum it all in one sense, like, actually just learning to go with it. Yeah. That, that uh, quote, enjoy the journey, is one of the most abused and misunderstood quotes ever because everyone says it. Mm-hmm. Like the amount of time I talk to YouTubers or creators who are like, enjoy the journey, enjoy the journey. Mm-hmm. But then they get a 10 out of 10 ranked video and they're like, it like wrecks their day or they, uh-huh. like, yeah. And then, and they, they throw around the phrase, but it, it's one thing to know the phrase and understand it. And it's one thing to live it, like, yeah. it in your heart. Um, yeah. You said a lot there. The, <laughs> the, there is so much. I talked to, I know you said one of your inspirations is Kelly Wakasa. Mm-hmm. So I just did a podcast with his brother, Casey Wakasa. Oh, okay. He lives in San Diego. Yeah. And he's a physical artist. Uh huh. Well, Casey Wakasa is uh, the middle brother between Kelly, who's his younger brother, and he has, mm-hmm. I don't know what his older brother's name is, but his older brother's a pro soccer player. Yeah. And his younger brother is a YouTuber with millions of views. Uh huh. You know, and, and he's like, decently successful finding his way in the mm-hmm. and and i was asking him like oh do you have any like pressure to live up to what your like brothers do and and he was very like uh awesome in the fact that he's like me and all all me and my brothers support each other like i want my brother to be the best soccer player my brother to be the best youtuber and they want the best for me but he was like of course there's a pressure to like live up to what they've done it's like it's like they're like these great successful people i want to get on their level and I, I was like, that's so interesting because, it, again, it just comes back to the definitions of success, mm-hmm. where it's like, um, you think that your brother who plays soccer is more successful than you because you guys both played soccer and he went pro and uh-huh. you don't play anymore. You think that Kelly's more successful than you because you both made YouTube videos, uh-huh. but his have millions of views and you don't have. Uh-huh. But it's like, what if um, your bro- your brother who plays soccer... Yes, he, yes, he like is pro and he's making more money. Uh huh. But he has such a strict schedule that every day he has to be at practice. He's always traveling for games, and he is actually neglecting time with people, and he's and he's not being able to spend the time with the people he loves. And what if Kelly actually wishes he could go back to the days where he didn't have to pay an editor, that he didn't have to hit a deadline, that he wasn't paying New York rent? He's like. And this is not me. Like, I don't know these things to be true, but it was funny because as I was saying it for him, he's like, dude, you're right. Like, I've seen Kelly deal with anxiety as he's gotten more popular. I've seen Kelly deal with these things as he's gotten more popular. It's like, we we have this idea that more views and more money means a better life. Right, Like, right. we look so forward to it. Yeah. But it's like, so many people get there and they're like, dang, I wish I had enjoyed every part. And, and there's like one quote in The Office where it's mm-hmm. like, kind of... Uh, it's like one of the peak moments of the show where uh-huh. where Andy comes out and he says, he says like, I wish we knew we were in the good old days before you left the Oh, I, I, yeah, yeah. But it's like that quote is like, 
I look like I like really struggled with depression in high school. Mm -hmm. And like in the moment, I felt like so many of my days were bleak and unenjoyable. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting because when I look back on high school now, even though I know that I was depressed, I remember it. When I look back on high school, it feels like I'm just like, dude, I would do anything to go back to high school. Like it sounds so fun. Like, yeah. And it's like those are times where I literally was unhappy. And, but looking back on it, I'm like, dude, high school is so fun. And then looking back on like, I remember being in lacrosse practice and like the coach would make us run laughs and he'd be like, dude, there's one day you're going to want to be back here. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was in college, I was so, so eager to drop out. Like I wanted to drop out because I wanted to just start my creative journey, start my creative journey. Mm -hmm. And I dropped out and I think it was the right decision, but dude, I would do anything to be back in my car. <laughs> yeah. And what I'm realizing is that it's not that there's one period of time that's going to be the good old days. It's like every, every period of time is the good old days. Yeah. So like, why are you so eager? It's like, if you, if you feel like you're in school and you can't relate and you want to be a creator, I promise you, you're going to miss those days. Yeah. And you're going to miss the days you were nice when you're going to miss the days you're in now. Yeah. And I'm going to miss the days when I only had a few hundred views on my yeah. podcast. So it's like, yeah. that's something too, where it's like, just like these days, like you're so eager to be in those days. Dude, these days, you're going to miss these days right now. Crazy. Like, yeah. and um, it's like, and think about like someone like Kelly McCoss. It's like if he wanted to come film a podcast on a mountain right now, he'd probably get harassed by people. Or like maybe not him, but like right. there's levels and there's things that you're gonna enjoy in every part of the journey. And just remembering that like in some way or another, this is the most successful you'll be at one aspect of yeah of what you're doing. And and maybe it's just the fondness or the uh -huh. newness or the uh, yeah. And that's just that's something to keep in contact. And I and I I saw that you had talked about like that imposter syndrome, like feeling unworthy comparison. Mm -hmm. And it's like, again, like I just brought up the example of Casey Wacosta, but it's like the only, when people talk about comparison and feeling unworthy, it again comes from uh, what I call destination happiness, mm -hmm. which is that you think that if your numbers looked similar to whoever you're comparing yourself to, mm -hmm. you think that if your videos looked similar to whoever you're comparing yourself to, you would be happier or that you would feel more successful. But it, but it, in reality, if you think that way, you're just you're just setting yourself up to, even if you get there, you're going to find someone else. You're going to find something bigger. You're going to find... Um, it's like I love to look at Mr. Beast and, and I, like, I think Mr. Beast is so talented. He's, you know, <laughs> he's changed YouTube forever, but it's like this guy is like... I think he just hit 200 million subscribers or something mm -hmm. absurd. That's crazy. And he still wants more. He's like, I want to get to a billion. But it's That's like, crazy. how many people, it's like, you see it on every level, bro. There's billionaires. They still want more. They're buying more companies. They're starting more things. And it's like, um, I would, like, if there's someone who's like a billionaire and he's, he's constantly desiring more money and more business and more, I really would consider myself wealthier in the soul because it's like, I, I really believe that I have everything I need. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, and I, that doesn't mean that like I'm against aspirations or there's not more to like gain or that I'm not aiming for. But I just think that like, I'm really, really genuinely happy with where I'm at right. and everything else is just a bonus. Mm -hmm. And it, and I don't know, maybe people would hear that and think that like, maybe people would hear that and think, well, like, how can you be motivated? But uh, to me, it's just like, it, it's like even more motivating because it's just like, there's nothing I have to like strive for or live for. It's just like, I just make what I want to make. Right. And enjoy right. the process and the journey. Yeah. And I, I guess I want to hear more about like comparison and, and living non-perfectly. You put it in one. <laughs> yeah. Um, living non-perfectly. I feel like. I've been trying to, I guess, and you know, achieve perfection. Whatever it is, you know, the perfect son, the the perfect creator, the the perfect student. Um, you know, and I'm sure everybody can relate to. You know, you just want to try your best, but yeah, you know, perfection is so unreal. You know, we, you know, it's like, you know, we try to live perfectly, but what if we just, what if we just lived non perfectly, right? Like just, just let the things be as it is and to I guess you know be in the moment and to not let those ideas of perfection 
come and intrude on, I guess, you know, just your way of living. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope, I hope yeah. I'm making sense, you know? It's like, it's like the standards. Yeah, not letting, not letting standards interfere um, with you just being happy because once we start, once we start, like you said, the destination happiness, the comparison, once we start that, yeah. you lose sight of the things that you do have, yeah. right? And you, you, um, oh, what's the word? You, um, uh, dang, what, well, what's the word? You, you start, you start to like, it's like, you know, you, you, you want what they have, you know, yeah. and that, I forgot what word that was. I don't know why it's called that. Uh, wait, er, envy, envy. There, uh, that one. There you go. You start to envy. Oh, my bad. You're good. You start to envy what others have, and you know, you you forget what you do have. Yeah. You know, and it's like if we can just enjoy, you know, like our being and knowing that you know we are unique to who we are, right? Because you know, no. Because let's be honest, you're not going to be able to become the yeah. next Kelly Wakasa. You can't become the next Elliot Cho. You can't become the next Wholesome Simon. But no one can also become the next you. You know, yeah. like you are you. You know, yeah. it should be uniquely to you. Um, and no one can live up to you because yeah. you know you're you. Yeah. So if, if I guess if you know we shift that mindset, right? And instead of thinking about it as like being perfect or being not perfect or all these things, and just thinking about it as like you know you as an individual, I feel like you know you'll be able to just be happy with what the things you want to do. Uh, I guess another another thing that I thought about when you were talking about like you know doing what you want and doing what makes you happy like uh, you know your podcast and not worrying about the metrics yeah like i started doing that like i started creating videos like with the stuff about like you know i've been thinking a lot lately and all these stuff like these were videos that i've been thinking about making but i never did them because i thought i would get judged for them where i yeah. thought about like oh you know you know oh you know you're you know you, you don't make sense you know i was afraid of judgment i was afraid of performance but i just i was like you know what like this is the videos I want to make. These are the videos that I want to make, talk about. I want it to be in this aspect ratio. I don't want it to be vertical like everyone's mm-hmm. doing. Um, and like, I became so much more satisfied in what yeah. I'm doing lately um, because there was a purpose and intent be- yeah. behind what I created and not just because I wanted to please the algorithm. Yeah. You know? There's a lot there. I think something with that too is that it's like, you're making something that you are happy with. Mm-hmm. And it's like, if you make something because you think other people will like it, it's like, and the best example I can think of this is like ever since Mr. Beast blew up. So like mm-hmm. his, and he blew up because he loves what he does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I see people who try to recreate his, his videos, but they don't have the same budget. So they end up making something like, I gave all my friends $1 to get the most snacks out of the vending machine or, uh-huh. like, or like I put all my friends in a circle and the winner gets a hundred dollars uh-huh. it's like but I know they're not making that video because they actually like are passionate about it mm-hmm. they're making that video because they they believe that it will work right and the thing is that it it might work it might but it's only going to feel good. The metrics are only going to feel good while they're new. So like when you right. first get those million views, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. Mm-hmm. And when you first get that money, you're like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. But then you're going to, once you like that initial lure loses its value and you're comfortable with your money and you're comfortable with your views, <laughs> it's going to be the worst thing because now you're going to realize, oh, I'm not passionate about making this video and I've built an audience that wants mm-hmm. this content. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm enslaved. I mean, I know that's a really intense one. Right. Right, yeah. It's like you're enslaved to making something you okay. don't want to. You yeah. have to. Yeah. It's your yeah. job. It's your career. Yeah. And so it's like, I would rather take 10 years to build an audience for something I'm passionate about making mm-hmm. than have, than instantly be successful for being someone I'm not, right, for pushing right. values I don't, yeah. I don't agree with. Mm-hmm. And it's like, because then it's going to be like, internally, you're, I think that's like, that's to me that's like the worst case scenario is mm-hmm. blowing up for something you you don't want to actually yeah do. like you're like oh man i blew for this <laughs> and you're like that's it's crazy. like you see it all the time with um uh, like tiktokers who like blew up for doing like the dance videos and they're trying to, <laughs> they're trying to like change yeah. their uh like who they were or like you even see like with 
Logan Paul is, and he's like, he doesn't want to make those logs anymore. Yeah. Like, the people don't want to play the game anymore. Uh, uh-huh. And it's just, it's just interesting. And I also think the, the idea of destination happiness is like people think they're going to adopt the mindset. Mm-hmm. So they think that they're going to be like, okay, once I get a million subscribers, I'll be happy. But once I get there, I'm not going to say that again. I'm going to stop and I'm going to really be happy. But it's like if you create any habit, like like let's say a lot of people wake up and they drink a cup of coffee. Right. And they do that every right. day for a year. Is They're not going to in a year wake up and not drink coffee because mm. they're building the habit. So it's like if you're building the habit of like I, I'm a... I'm going to be happy when I get a million subscribers. When you get a million subscribers, if you thought that every day for four years until you get a million subscribers, do you think that when you get a million subscribers, you're not, you're just going to be like, I hit it. I'm good. Yeah. No, you're just going to pick another number and you're going to pick another because yeah. you've trained yourself to think that way. Yeah. The issue is not that it's bad to have goals. The issue is not that it's bad to say, I want a million subscribers. Mm-hmm. The issue is that you're training yourself to put happiness and success in the future. Mm-hmm. And then when you get that, you can't ever get to the future. Right, right. And that's like something I think uh, people, because I, I don't want ever want people to hear my message and be like, oh, Ozzy wants to not make money and wants to not have subscribers. No, I want to make money and I want to yeah, have subscribers yeah. too. It's that I don't ever want to put my happiness in the future. Right, that's right. the real right lesson. Um, and yeah, that's why I think it's, it's so important to mm-hmm. make what you actually care about and um i think we should talk a little bit about our friend ethan who who has that catchphrase make stuff even if it's bad oh yeah 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 i love that guy ethan he uh definitely has been an inspiration to me as well like you know he's very you know very very new he you know he you know he just recently blew up but man i when i heard he was at week one i was like oh man i want to meet that guy that guy seems so cool um yeah, no, I, I definitely have been very inspired by that. That that video, the live non perfectly, like I literally put in the caption like inspired by Ethan on Curious. Yeah. Because like, you know, be, his his topics on um, you know, like, you know, making stuff even if it's bad or, you know, like the the feelings that we go through as a creator, right? It's the artist versus the algorithm, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. Like I was like, Well, like like these are things that I definitely deal with. These are things that I'm sure yeah. that a lot of creators deal with. And so yeah. Have huh. you have you seen uh, it's a really popular video that gets recommended to a lot of creators. It's called uh, The Creative Process by Ira Glass. Oh, it's man. like, not... okay, it's like a, it's just, I think it's Simon Sinek is the one talking. Uh-huh. Um, it's just like a little animation of him talking. And he basically says that everyone who wants to be a creator has really good taste. Uh-huh. And so what the word taste means in this context is that everyone who wants to be a creator has people they look up to and they know what good content looks like Mm -hmm. and they themselves want to make good content not necessarily that they want to copy people but they know what the standard of like that is a great youtube video or that is a great song and they're like i want to make great youtube videos Mm -hmm. i want to make so they have good taste because they're a consumer Mm -hmm. and but but then they create and because they're a beginner at creating their taste what they know and love and what they're able to make there's a gap and it's like, and it's frustrating because they know they want to make something of this quality, but they literally can't because they right. don't have the experience. Right. And he talks about how so many people quit because the because of this gap. They right. they can't. Right. But um, you to be success to, or I don't like to use the word success in those terms, but to get to a place where you're creating something you're really happy about, you're mm-hmm. really truly proud of, or to that satisfies your taste is. You have to close the scalp. Mm-hmm. And the only way to close the scalp is with repetitions. Yes. And that's why it was, it was so interesting hearing uh, Ethan, who's very numerically successful, talk about make stuff even if it's bad. It's because if you want to live up to your taste, if you want to create the things that you love, then you have to make stuff eat even while it's bad. That's literally how you close the app of... Yeah. That's how you close the gap of taste. What I love... And what I'm able to create. Mm-hmm. And if you want to get to a place where you're creating the same caliber of content that you love, then you, you have to make stuff even while it's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And eventually, one day, it just won't be bad. Yeah, yeah. Because you've done the reps, you've learned yeah. enough. And, and that's why those like fears of like, ah, uh, people might judge you. Yes, they will judge you. 
And yeah. you should be happy that people judge you because if they didn't, your barrier to entry, your level of competition, uh -huh. everyone wants to be a YouTuber. Um, so if if a significant amount of people weren't quitting because they were judged, if a significant amount of people weren't quitting because their parents didn't approve, mm -hmm. then you would have so much more competition. There's a Ben Nempton quote. He's He created the the Buried Life, which was an MTV show that mm -hmm. Yen Studio was inspired by. Yeah, yeah. And he talks about... Uh, he talks, dream jobs are actually the best jobs to pursue because they're the least competitive. Whereas, like, mm -hmm. to me and you, they feel so competitive because, mm -hmm. because we're, like, seeing all these YouTubers, seeing all right, these people. Because right. we're in that space. Because we're, we're in this space. So, so much more focused. It feels so competitive. Yeah. But... And, and to be fair, YouTube might be. <laughs> YouTube might be because so many, like, it's the number one job that kids want to be. Uh -huh. But in reality, um, like, if you take either my college, SDSU, or you college, UCSD, like, we're in the less than 1%. Uh -huh. Like, 99% of the people who had some sort of dream job, whether it be a YouTuber, be an actor, be a musician, are just gave up on it and are are getting a degree. And it's so funny because we talk about degree jobs as if they're like the least competitive. Do the safe thing. Get a degree. Do this. When we talk about it, like it's the safe thing, but it's the most competitive. It's what yeah. everyone's being filtered. Everyone's being filtered to get a business degree. Everyone's being filtered to do this. And then you guys from, so 99% of kids our age will go to a college. 99% or whatever, 75% of those people will get a degree, mm -hmm. and then all those people will fight over the same job. Mm -hmm. Yet we act like that's the safe route when our job is actually much less competitive. Mm -hmm. But it just it just doesn't feel that way because right. like society has labeled it. Right. It's like, right. this is such, I hope it's making sense to you. I, you. I know, I, I this makes sense. I, and I, I thought about this too, and I, I heard this. I, it wasn't labeled as, you know, how you put it earlier, yeah. but like, I, I've definitely heard this conversation before and i definitely see in all my friends like why is it that the safe job right even if i get the degree that i'm i'm pursuing right now like yeah i'm not gonna be able to get this job like i i cannot i actually cannot because one i don't have a portfolio for it and two so many people are gonna be going for that job right yeah. and it's so more so even more competitive for like like all my friends who are like computer science majors and are going for like that software engineer job like yeah. those are the most competitive yeah. You are legitimately just a number yeah. to these companies. Like you, you're not a person to them. You are just number five hundred and fifty-two yeah. in the application pool. Like that's it. And you know you're gonna be, you're gonna. It's gonna be decided like that whether or not you're gonna get an interview or not. And even when you get an interview, yeah, you still got like twelve more rounds to go through, and it's like that's considered safe. You're right. Like that's that's considered the safe job. That's a safe route. Like yeah, yeah degree, get a job. But holy, like, I mean, if you want to add another layer to it, it's like, uh, it's like, all right, AI is clearly rapidly advancing. Oh, it's like, oh, yeah. Do you think, and I'm not going to be so naive to say AI is not going to affect the podcasting industry. It certainly is. It's yeah. already cutting clips and it's doing edits, but it's like, it's like, what do you think is going to get automated faster? A job that lives on a computer in Google Sheets uh -huh. or creative work that's like, where it's like, I'm really trying to position myself with soul wealth. Because oh. I don't think AI is going to be teaching soul wealth. Right. I don't. Exactly. This is what I know about AI. Okay, okay. This is what I know about AI. Okay, okay. I can't tell you what AI is going to fix and what it's not going to fix. But I, I know that since the dawn of AI, loneliness has gotten worse. Oh. Depression has gotten worse. Oh. And community has gotten worse. So if I can stay in loneliness, depression, community, mental health, if I can stay in an area where I really believe soul wealth helps us things, then I don't think my job will get automated. But it's like taking what you said and what we said was already true about the the uh, degrees. Is like we act like they're so safe, but they're not. And then if you add the layer of like what's what's possibly going to get automated, right. it's like I'm sure that stuff's going to get automated before like community building and yeah. creative work. Yeah. So it's like it's even less safe oh. go from that angle. Yeah. Uh, and that's just like, yeah, there's just so many, so many layers to, uh -huh. to that. Uh, uh -huh. I also think it like what you're saying with portfolios, it's like, it's like we're growing up in an age where for a number of reasons, I think college is more valuable to our parents. I think uh -huh. it, 
any asset, the less you have of any asset, the more it's worth. That's why, like, the more dollars you have, the less they're worth. Right. And so it's like, just by inherent inherentness, there was less degrees when our, it was more rare to go to college when our parents were. There's more degrees than have ever existed. So inherently, they're worth less than they've ever been. Mm. And there's only going to be more and more and more. And um, so th th that's like an interesting thing too. But uh, the whole like, w w when our parents were older, like their degree made them stand out because everyone didn't have one. And especially from s prestigious schools. Mm -hmm. But now it's like, everyone's being so funneled into getting one that they're worth less and less and less. And the, our parents didn't have iPhones to cheat. Now right. kids have iPhones to cheat. Now they have right. chat GVT to write their essays. Yeah. Chat GVT to write their essays. They have computers to cheat, iPhones to cheat. They're going to have AIs to cheat. And it's like, if employers are just going to like, employers are not going to notice this and they're just going to say, I assume everyone who got a degree did it perfectly, mm. justfully, and, and they did it. Well, they're going to be screwing themselves because they're going to end up hiring people because of their GPA and their degree. Uh -huh. And those people are, are not going to be the best problem solvers. They're not going to be the best workers. Yeah. They're just going to be the best cheaters. And so it's like, and I, I'm like, and I can say this because I'm a dropper and I know you probably can't say this. I encourage cheating because that's the real world. It's, it's finding a solution to your problem. But it's like, if, if employees continue to hire solely based on degrees and GPAs, they're setting themselves up for failure. And I think that's why portfolios and resumes are going to become all the more popular. And then it's like, I always tell people this, like I, I walked into a, a marketing company two years ago uh -huh. and I, I wanted them to sponsor a, a short film I wanted to make. And they didn't sponsor it, but they gave me a job. And I ended oh. up working for this marketing company and I did marketing for Dyson, for Supercell, for uh, like all these big companies. And I was like, dude, if I were to go try to, I know so many students at SDSU who got a marketing degree. And I'm like, if I were to try to get a marketing job in San Diego and they were to try to get a marketing job in San Diego, I think I would stand out because they all have the same degree. Mm -hmm. So they are they have a piece of paper that says I'm the same as all the other applicants. Right, right. But I could say, hey, I don't have the degree, but I've worked with Dyson. I've worked with Supercell. Uh -huh. Here's my portfolio. Uh -huh. Here's the things I've done. I've run a campaign. And it's like, I, I don't like, to me, it makes so much more sense that I'm the more valuable candidate. Right, right, right. I, yeah. Oh, I was going to say, like, I think even more so than that, like, like those are very valuable, too. Um, it's the story. It's the fact that you just walked in. And, yeah. Like, you were originally trying to, you know, get get funding. And, you know, then they sort of like, no, we'll just give you a job. Like, I think this, that story in itself it makes you stand out even more. Yeah. You know, all these people have the same story. I went to college, got yeah. a degree, got the piece of paper, right? But you, you can say you got the portfolio, you work for these companies. And I, and I managed to get these experiences because I just walked in and... Yeah. Uh, you know, that's so. I like, thought that one was crazy. That one was like, whoa, that's so cool. Bro, stories are so big. I, yeah. Even if you think about like Chris Duncan sneaking to Forbes. Yeah. His exactly. goal is to get a job at Forbes. Uh huh. He didn't get one, but Inc. Magazine was like, they heard the story and they're like, we want to hire you. Uh huh. And yeah. So, story is so big, and school in a way does does train us to have like a less cool story. It's a lot harder to, um, and I and I actually like. I think dropping out is too glorified and that's coming from a dropout. <laughs> like, yeah. I think a lot of times we talk about dropping out as if it's the solution. Right. So, and the reason we do that is because we hear these stories from people who have already quote unquote made it, uh -huh. who have huge money or huge followings mm -hmm. and, and they tell their story of dropping out and it's almost always the pivot point. Right. So we look at dropping out as like, that is my solution. This is it. But yeah. It's it's never the solution. Dropping out is just one decision in many that helps you get to where you want to be. And everyone I know who's ever dropped out, it was not how they had it dream written up in their head. Uh huh. And um, so as much as I'm for dropping out and for not going to school, I I don't think it should uh, be glorify. glorify. Yeah. Because it's just a, one more decision that helps you get to where you want to be. Right. It's not a solution. Yeah. Because everyone, everyone that dropped out, like they had a plan, they had something yeah. going on, right? Like, like it wasn't, it wasn't a senseless dropping out. It was, it was like, you know, it was meticulous. There was planning. There was, there was thought. There was deep conversation about it before doing, making that decision. I think. I, even, I mean, I. Was. But I think even more so, it's not that like. It's that your plan never goes, to plan. Like right. You don't, 
like people like like for me it was like i'm gonna drop out and all the time i'm spending on school i'm gonna spend on my videos and therefore i will be successful mm -hmm. but when i dropped out i didn't have any friends to be in my videos and i realized i'm not passionate about creating alone uh -huh. so i so i sat in a rut for like six months the first six months after I dropped out was the least videos I ever made, and it was the most time I ever had to make videos. Uh -huh. But then I was like, all right, I found this podcast, and over time, I, I never knew I wanted to be a podcaster, uh -huh. and I don't even know, maybe podcasting won't be what I'll do, but like, right. it's like, it never looks exactly like how you how you think it's going to look, you uh -huh. know? Um, and that's just an interesting thing, and, and that's why, like, this is kind of a topic switch, but even just like, I know you said it was one of your dreams to move to New York, New York City after college. Yeah. And now you're like, well, maybe I'll move to LA. And, uh -huh. and it's like, it's funny how we, we just, we, pl we plan so much in our lives. And I think plans are good to have, but bad to hold. Like, mm, interesting. Okay. Like plans are good to, you should have dreams and aspirations, uh -huh. but you shouldn't like, I need to do this. I right. have to do this because- then you like blind yourself to opportunities. It's almost uh -huh. like, like in relationships when we like a girl or something. Uh -huh. Well, it's like, you know, there's a classic quote, there's other fish in the sea. Yeah. Like, yeah. You get so like, you create this fantasy that you could have with one girl you like or whatever. And, um, it's like, you're blinding yourself to all other options. Yeah. And it's kind of, we do that with our, our future and our careers and stuff too. It's like you obsess about what it would be like to be a YouTuber. But maybe you would really like podcasting or maybe you'd really like something else. And yeah. It's like when you obsess with a future and a career, you're, you're in a sense, you're, you're taking one fish out of the ocean and you're putting it on ground and you're staring at it. <laughs> you're oh, like fish. What, what's up fish? But the, <laughs> maybe you like dollar fish. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But speak on, speak on that. And uh, uh, yeah, there's this, there's this, um, on that, to kind of like sum it up, you know, I guess to put that into like a quote. Yeah. Um, I this is something I definitely want to talk about in the sense that I, I definitely want to make a video on this. Um, soon, whether or not I do it through like I've been thinking a lot lately or something, but it's something that I realized over summer in in relation to base camp and like even now when you're talking about it is this quote that I've thought of. It's is uncertainty is opportunity. Yeah. Um. And this came to my head because during the summer, I was interning in Singapore. You know, I was in a social media company. And during that time, I was also interviewing for a fall internship. So I wasn't going to be here this fall. I was, you know, going to be, you know, in the Bay. And the internship was for Tesla. Um, yeah. It was going to be for a video photo design internship in, in Fremont, California, you know, at Tesla. And... You know, I went through the interviews, you know, and it was like the first time I ever got an interview. You know, I've been applying to internships, uh, you know, this whole this whole school year. And this is the first one I get an interview for. And it's with Tesla. I'm like, oh, I, I can't mess this up. I can't mess this up. I can't mess this up. And I didn't get it. Like, I unfortunately yeah. didn't get it. And I remember feeling like lost. I was like, oh, my God, like this one thing, this one yeah. thing that I thought like would make me like, I guess, make it, you know, uh, the, the one thing that I would, you know, once I get this internship that I am set for life because now I can get any job that I want. Um, and so I was thinking like, oh man, like, you know, oh, I'm what, what, what now? Yeah. You know? And then base camp comes on yeah. and the application was released. Yeah. And I remember thinking, you know, I'm going to apply to this. I'm going to shoot my shot and shot in the dark, get an interview. I was interviewed by Chris and you know, he goes, you want to come? Yeah. Like, yes. Like, yeah. Like, hell yeah. Right. Um, and that got me reflecting after that, that call um with chris like that got me reflecting like i wouldn't like ultimately base camp whatever base camp stands for whatever creative camp stands for right yeah. being a creator and being a youtuber and being an artist and whatever that is what i want to do with my life right like the tesla like the the internships that's what i've been trained to think that yeah. I have to do you know but if i had if i had gone that internship let's say yeah. i did get that internship right i wouldn't have been able to go to base camp yeah. i would not be here me and you would not be yeah. sitting here talking yeah. right now if I was up, you know, yeah. in the Bay doing an internship, like I yeah. wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't have met so many people and ultimately be pursuing like my dream that I've always wanted to do. And so from that, I've been, you know, telling everybody and myself, like, you know, uncertainty is opportunity. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I was so uncertain about my future after that rejection. 
but that that led to an opportunity for me to go to base camp and so now right like i have this dream to go to new york i have this dream to you know go to la uncertainty is opportunity right um and i am thoroughly enjoying every all the opportunities that have come my way yeah. since then you know since not being able to get that internship because ultimately this is what i want to do more and i and i just didn't realize it you know i didn't yeah. I, I was so focused on oh i didn't get it that this what and so from here like i've been able to do concert photography you know which yeah. has been so much fun and being able to shoot for artists and you know being on this podcast with you and yeah. talking to you like it's been so much fun and so like I've been able to do all this within like the last like, you know, month, yeah. you know, since base camp. So I'm just so, ex- I'm really excited that, yeah, you're right. I don't have it. I don't have a job lined up. I don't know what my future is going to look like. You know, I don't know how it is. I'm going to make a living. What I do know is that I'm just excited for the options that will come, yeah. even though my future is uncertain. But yeah. I feel like with that uncertainty, right, I guess another way to put it is with that uncertainty, means that you're 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 i guess your story is not yet written yeah. you can still write it like you you have so many options you can do whatever you want because you're not tied down i'm not tied down to a job where i have to do that job now you know and i'm stuck doing that forever like i i still have something left to do you know yeah bro, uh, if that, bro if that I, I love that phrase uncertainty is opportunity i'm gonna i'm gonna steal from you <laughs> um I, i'm sure you, maybe you've heard uh steve jobs say like you can only connect the dots looking backwards. Mm, yeah. Ha- have you ever heard that? I've never heard that okay. quote, but that, that makes sense. That's like, well, the example he gives, which is so awesome, Uh huh. is when Steve Jobs, before he ever knew he was going to create Apple or the iPhone, he he took a calligraphy class uh-huh. in, uh, I don't know if it was calligraphy or typography. I think it was calligraphy class in college. And um, it didn't do any, it didn't give him a degree. Um, I think, he, I think he ultimately it was a dropout. I think he came back just because he, for some reason he was interested in calligraphy. Uh-huh. Like it, it literally did nothing for like, uh-huh. wasn't going to get a degree for it, contributed nothing, spent uh-huh. money, took, but he was uh-huh. just like, I like calligraphy. Uh huh. And then like years later when he invented the iPhone, because he had taken the calligraphy class, uh-huh. he knew how uh, he was really inspired by clean fonts and clean text. Uh-huh. And so what he learned in the clarity class, he put into the iPhone to make it sleek. And mm. and it's like, that was the thing that everyone loved about the iPhone uh-huh. in the beginning, the, the like how clean and slick it was. And it, it was from the, his calligraphy or the uh-huh. typography class. Yeah, yeah. And that's like, so um, that's so interesting. And so it's like, there's so many moments where you connect the dots looking backwards. It's like, like I bet you you probably wouldn't trade base camp for, Tesla. No, I know. Yeah. No, hell no. And so it's no. like when those moments hot, I think the takeaway here, because it's like I've had so many of those moments in my uh-huh. life, and I'm sure you've had so many moments uh-huh. in The takeaway is that the next time there's a life wrecking moment, and a lot of time a life wrecking moment looks like a heartbreak. Yeah. A lot of time a life wrecking moment looks like, um, and so there's like two types of life wrecking moments. There's like where you, you didn't get something you wanted. Uh-huh. So it's like, oh, I wanted a Tesla internship or uh-huh. I this or that. And then the, there's other life wrecking moments where they're like hardships and I, maybe right. someone dies or right. you have a heartbreak. And and I this is not to say like something bad happens, like you the death of a loved one and you just mm-hmm. celebrate. But but I think that again, even with the hardest things in life, even with the death of friends, it's like those are the moments, like the the biggest areas of growth come from the hardest struggles. Mm-hmm. And it's like, there's so many things that I've learned from death as well as plans not going my way. And it's like, I think it's so important to keep in mind that when you do have, the next time you have a moment, if you're listening to this podcast, the next time you have a moment where it feels so life altering or life wrecking, that there will be a time where that, that event makes sense and has a purpose and has a plan. And it only does you good to lessen the gap. We were talking about a gap earlier, huh? Lessen the gap between a tragic event to how fast you can accept that something good can come from it. Right, And something good is way more likely to come from it when you have the mentality too. Yeah. So it's like, uh, it's like if you were just dwelling on Tesla Mm -hmm. and every day you're like, ah, I miss Tesla, I miss Tesla, I miss Tesla. Well, then maybe you wouldn't even 
have been inspired by the base camp thing because yeah. we would have been just obsessed with the yeah, exactly. idea. Yeah. So they're just missing, like, recognizing that, you know, there's like another uh, story. I think it might be like a fable, like a made up story uh-huh. um, where it's like this dude, uh, he like breaks his arm and he's like, my, uh, and he's like, and his dad comes or one of his friends comes. He's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry you broke your arm. Mm. He's like, this is such a horrible thing. And the guy goes, I don't know. And then the next day, the country goes to war and they're, and they're drafting people for war. But he can't get drafted. And so the same guy comes back and he goes, dude, you can't get drafted for war because you're broken arm. That's so good. And, and then he goes, guy goes, I don't know. And then it's like, and it, it keeps going on and on and on. And it's like, uh, like a series of things that would be either perceived as good or bad happen to him. But then it just always keeps changing back and forth. Uh, yeah, and that's uh, like... Hey. That is like life. It's like, it's like, oh, I'm so sorry, William. You didn't get your Tesla oh, and you're like, yeah. but you don't know. Yeah. You don't know. Yeah. And so you might as well just think that everything happens for a reason. Yeah. As we'll just assume yeah. that good will come from it. Yes. Yeah. If you don't know. And that's definitely the mindset that I've been having. Like, uh, and that's why, you know, I, I, you know, I keep saying like, yeah, my future is uncertain. Like, I, I don't yeah. know what's going to happen. Like, I don't have a full-time job lined up. Like, all my friends... You know, they, they got a return offer, you know, they're going to work at Google, they're going to work at Amazon, yeah. what have you. And, you know, they're like, oh, what are you doing? Well, I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. But that's the thing. Like, I know that as long as I put in the work, yeah. as long as I keep forward with the goals that I have in mind, the dreams that I want to accomplish, and to, you know, genuinely just put in the work, I will I will be where I need to be. Yeah. And, 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 and the good things will come, you know. I just gotta, I just gotta trust the process. Yeah. But more importantly, is me just enjoying the journey. Like, yeah. like, yes, it's my last year in college. Yes, I only have one year to prove, I, you know, quote unquote, prove myself in order to, you know, uh, have something lined up for me. I guess. But more importantly, because it's my last year, I'm trying to make sure I spend it with you know my yeah. college friends that I might not see for a while. You know, um, and to just let the things come as they yeah. as they come. You know. So I've been able to hang on my friends. I've been able to put time into my orgs. I've been able to still do my concert shoots. That I've been getting the opportunity to shoot, um, getting to be here. Yeah, um, yeah I think life is good. Yeah, life life is good, and I'm just I'm just so excited and so happy because now you know now I'm thinking like, dude, I thought 2022 like when I went to you know Korea and, I, mm-hmm. and studied abroad there, I thought that's that was as good as I was gonna get. Yeah. Right? like I, I I was I was going into 2023 going like, dude, like. How do I even top yeah. 2022? Like, I went to Korea. You can't top that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I know. here we go in 2023. Dude. You know, I went to Singapore. I went to base camp. I met all these people and you know, done all these things. So now now, now the next question becomes like, you know, what is 2024 going to look like? I can only imagine what happens from Dude. there. And I'm just going to trust that yeah. things are going to happen the way they need to be. Dude, that's so crazy. I literally, like, Every single year for like the past five years has been better than the last year for me. Uh huh. And it's like I'm truly really trying not to like hold myself to that standard. Right. But it's so funny because every year, I, you know, and I had a really hard start to the beginning of this year. I had I was diagnosed with an autoimmune uh, disease. I had my first ever breakup. Um, my brother was like a really bad alcohol, like just dealing with him and like rehab and stuff. And like three months into the year, like March around my birthday, it was like, like the worst start of the year I've had maybe ever. And I, and I literally like, and I'm Christian, like I really believe in God. And I was just like, God, I still believe like this will be the best year of my life. And sure enough, like everything came around, like went to base camp, bro. I, this random millionaire dude sent me to walk 200 miles across Spain (laughs) I lived in New York City for a lot of the summer just by accident. So many amazing things happened. And I was like, I don't know. I mean, like, I give all glory to God. But, like, I credit, like, so much about, like, that just being, like, in the mud of it. When all the worst things were happening, mm-hmm. I f- believed that it wouldn't. I believed that it, there was a plan and purpose and that it would be better. Uh-huh. And I feel like, like, whether you believe in God or not or people believe in manifesting, it's like, your life will reflect your beliefs. Yeah. And so it's like, it's so important. It's it's really easy to think that life's going to be good and great when it is good and great. Right. The important part is thinking that 
everything has a plan and purpose and it's going to be good when, it, when, it's when, not. when it's not when you're in the thick yeah. of it yeah and um and that's like in, and then the other thing too like with every year being better than the last like we were talking about earlier with the good old days it's like it's this heavy every period of your life will be the good old days you're going to miss high school you're going to miss college you're going to miss soul you're going to miss base camp mm-hmm. and if you couldn't accept that it's like so much of every year being better than the last is really just a gratitude exercise yeah and just like are you grateful for the new experience that is this year? Uh-huh. And, um, yeah, I think we'll wrap it up soon, but I'm going to ask you my outro question. Okay, outro question. Which okay. is, I ask everyone the same question. It's okay. to reverse engineer the way you think about life. So, right. well, when you die, what do you want people to say about you? Ooh, that's deep. That's deep. Yeah. What do I want people to think about me when I die? Um, I think I just want people to to think that I was kind, yeah, you know, um, that I was able to help them, yeah, you know, I'm not perfect. I probably haven't been the kindest person. I probably haven't been the most helpful person, but you know, to know that, I guess, like I tried, you know, I yeah. I, I tried as hard as I can to do what needs to be done you know i'm okay like you know i love marvel right like you know yeah. uh, we were talking about this yeah. earlier so like one of my favorite superheroes is you know undoubtedly spider-man right mm-hmm. and it's like with great power comes great responsibility and i hope that you know the i've been able to be of help and of service to people um with as much of you know, the, the the ability and power that I have, you know, yeah. something about like Spider-Man is like, you know, um, he, people have been saying like, you know, people always wish that they were Spider-Man, but nobody wishes to be Peter Parker. And they don't yeah. realize like, you know, Peter Parker had like, has such like a hard life, you know, yeah. he went through so many heartbreak with, you know, the death of loved ones and with, you know, all the villains he has to fight and, you know, him trying to save the city countless times. Yeah. Um, and that has an effect on his job, you know, like he can't pay rent for things he's always missing time out with his you know friends and family and more importantly like he has to keep that life from them you know so they don't they don't understand what's going on he can't communicate with them and so it's like damn what i i went on so on such a tangent like (laughs) what you just said that it's like really striking deep with me because that is almost the perfect metaphor for the creator yeah because in some sense i mean especially when you're still in college and you're like some sense of it it's like yeah, your family knows, oh, Ozzy wants to be a creator. And, like, your friends are like, oh, Ozzy's vlogging. And uh-huh. it's like, but they don't they don't know it. It is, like, know it, yeah. it is a lot like putting a Spider-Man suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And going to creator camps kind of like, it's like meeting up with the, with the Avengers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah exactly. Like, all the people, the, the 10 people in the world who understand what I'm doing. Yeah. And um, that is so interesting. And even, yeah, everything about that analogy is yeah. very tip for yeah it's crazy so i guess i guess to answer your question (laughs) after that tangent is i guess i hope that people realize that i i try my best yeah like there are things that you probably didn't understand about my life and i hope you understand that like obviously you know because you know like at the end of the day like i i live with myself so i understand me fully because you know i I live with myself but you know there are things i'm gonna do that don't make sense there are things that i do that might hurt people sadly you know there are things that i do that are gonna benefit people you know, and the things that I do like that hurt people, like, it's not because I, I, I intentionally did it, you know, but yeah. maybe it had an effect that it just so happened. And I just hope that no matter whether or not, you know, I left a good impression or a bad impression on these people, I just hope that the common denominator between everybody is that I tried my best and and did what I could with the responsibility and the power that I had at in those moments. It's a great place to end it. Oh, hugs. Although, we thank you. Do, we do do, we do do one more thing. Yeah. Can you sit here at okay. alone and okay. then make some thumbnail faces? All right. Thumbnail make like, faces. Make like three to four. <laughs> okay. Um, let me see. Let me think. What are my faces going to be? Um. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me get my shadow off you. Let's see. Thumbnail faces. Is this good lighting? Is this going to be good? Yeah, this is, this is good. Okay. The lighting is actually ideal right now. Um, wait. When... <laughs> you're good you're good yeah let me i'll let me do mine for that all right yeah i know it's like a weird address
<laughs> All right, we'll call it there. Oh. Uh.